Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new build in my series, Building Nancy Drew in The Sims 4. Today we are back doing another apartment build for a character whose home we do not get to see in the game, but whose home I like to imagine given their personality. And this one was suggested in the comments, so thank you very much to the fellow detective who recommended that I do an apartment for Mason Quinto from Nancy Drew, The Deadly Device. I have also already done an apartment for Ryan Kilpatrick um, from the same game but Mason is a very very different character <laughs> and honestly I really was enjoying putting together this aesthetic for Mason because I basically just based it off of the color scheme that he wears and the idea that Mason likes everything just so his home, I imagined, would have to be very clean, it would have to be very precise, all of the colors would have to match, all of the clutter would have to be at perfect right angles, like there would be nothing amiss, because that's just how Mason is. He likes to have a very clean, very organized space, and so I really enjoyed kind of doing more of a minimalist style almost in The Sims. I took this apartment and I made it basically black, white, gray, and blue, which is also essentially what Mason is wearing in the game and really was my inspiration for the whole space itself. I have now just talked through the entire uh, furnishing of the kitchen, but uh, as you can see here in the entryway as well, I am making a lot of use of the Dream Home Decorator game pack, which honestly is one of the best, if not the best, game pack for builders if you enjoy building in the sims if you enjoy decorating it is absolutely spectacular for that because it really brings a lot of minimalist items that are extremely versatile into the game a lot of more contemporary pieces and not contemporary in the way of like contemporary art or modern art where you like go to an art museum and you see a lot of abstract very simple kinds of things but contemporary in the way that it has a very functional feel to it. The colors are more um, modern, they're more on trend, they're more muted, they're uh, relying a little bit more on wood tones, and I really, really love the pack. So Mason gets lots and lots of items from the Dream Home Decorator Game Pack. I do kind of imagine that Mason decorated his own apartment. I don't think he would ever be able to relinquish enough control to have anyone come in and give their opinion on what his space should look like. So I do imagine that all of these decorations were things that Mason chose specifically for the apartment. I can imagine too that he's probably the kind of person who would sit and research for hours to find the perfect piece for his apartment. He wouldn't settle for things that are just good enough or things that sort of match the color scheme but you know aren't perfect and he wouldn't have knickknacks. No, no. He he would be the person who would like go to a single store and buy everything in the set so that everything matches perfectly, everything looks good together, all of the aesthetics go nicely together. And I, I appreciate that about Mason. This is a style that I don't get to um, play around with too often, but that I really enjoyed because of that, because it's something a little bit new and different. I also tried to make this space feel like a pretty modern um, technological kind of home because, I mean, Mason is a scientist. He appreciates science. He's a physicist. So a lot of the items in the home do have kind of more of a modern spin to them, a more kind of sci-fi kind of look to them. Like, even this dining table, just the way the legs kind of curve and turn in and out, I think looks a little bit like space-like, which is definitely what I was going for when I was thinking about Mason's aesthetic. All of his rugs match as well. I thought that's another thing that he would do because it would bother him so much if he would get, you know, a black rug at one store and then try to get a, maybe a black and gray rug at another store and they didn't quite match. Like the blacks were not quite the same. So I would imagine that he would like go into a store and he would demand to purchase three of the same rug and then he would use them all throughout his house so that he can make sure that everything is perfect, which 
that's how Mason is and we love it. We love to see it. I always try to be very careful about um, diagnosing any sort of neurodiversity within um, movies, video games, etc. But there is a really compelling fan theory for the deadly device that I have always really loved and that's that each of the characters in the deadly device represents a different kind of neurodiversity. So Ryan Kilpatrick for example represents ADD and ADHD or at least is supposed to. Nico Jovic is supposed to represent autism. Ellie is supposed to represent anxiety. Gray is supposed to represent depression. And Mason here is supposed to represent um, obsessive compulsive disorder. And again, we're not making any diagnoses. We don't know these characters' lives. We don't know <laughs> quite a few things about them. We only get this one experience with them. But Mason in the game, you characters have players have the option to mess with his things and move his things around and it really distresses him um, to have his pencils not perfectly straight and to have his things out of order. Somebody messed with my things, he says, and he does not like that. So I imagine that his entire apartment, his entire home would need to reflect that kind of idea as well. Like somebody moved my pillows and that's not okay. <laughs> I imagine that um, Mason invites very few people over to his home. I did make sure to put a no shoes sign in the home as well because Mason, I feel like, would have very strict rules for any visitors that would come to his home. Like, there wouldn't be really any flexibility when it came to, like, do you take your shoes off or do you not take your shoes off? Like, no, you take your shoes off immediately. You must line them up perfectly straight by the door. <laughs> There's, like, a protocol for using the bathroom there's a protocol for what you're allowed to touch in the kitchen all sorts of stuff like that I figured that's how he would roll in his home which is fair this is his space he gets to make the rules and because he gets to make the rules that's why everything is kind of monochromatic like I mentioned before really the only colors that we're getting much of is the blue which I think still kind of functions mostly as a neutral but I love the blue swatches that came with all of the dream home decorator items like these blue couches are absolutely spectacular even the cushions on them they are perfectly straight again Mason would not mind that the cushions the pillows are all facing exactly the same way and that they match perfectly normally in the sims that looks a little bit unrealistic but for mason i think it actually makes sense i think <laughs> i think a minimalist um not super cluttered apartment is exactly what mason wants in life i think that's his dream we're moving on to the bathrooms now. This does end up being a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. The main bedroom does have an ensuite with a walk in closet. The second bedroom does also have a walk in closet, but the bathroom is separate. So, this is kind of the main bathroom that the second bedroom logically would use, but I decided not to give Mason a roommate. I think if he has ever had roommates in his life, um, it probably wasn't an enjoyable experience for him or the roommate. So I decided that Mason lives alone and he has a pretty um, successful job. He could definitely afford to live in this apartment by himself in a nice spacious two bedroom. I turned the second bedroom into a full on work at home office. I feel like that's another Another way that Mason tries to kind of maintain control over his life is that he does a lot of working from home and so his work setup at home I tried to make kind of similar to his work setup that I gave him in my build of the technology of tomorrow today lab which I'll try to remember to link in a card in the upper corner I just completed that build fairly recently. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, feel free to go check it out. I am now down to, I think, only three games in the series where I haven't done any builds from the game. And I'm really excited to start exploring some of the smaller spaces in some of the games that I have already built locations for. Um, like I now have built, for example, in Secrets Can Kill on Eloise's house and Maxine's diner. So that was really fun. And and I just want to keep exploring locations in the game, keep imagining them in The Sims, keep reimagining character homes. It's just so much fun for me. It's very, very soothing to just kind of start with an idea and see where it takes you. I like a little bit of direction. I'm that kind of creative where I need at least a little bit of a starting point, a little bit of inspiration. 
Like when I draw or sketch, I usually prefer to look at an inspiration image. I know a lot of people who can just kind of free draw and don't need that inspiration image. But for me, I usually like to reimagine and sometimes I feel like I kind of have to reimagine. Otherwise, what's in my brain does not translate to how I want it to look on paper. And I've kind of experienced that with all kinds of physical art that I've done. Like when I've tried painting, for example, same thing. I, I'm a recreation kind of artist, <laughs> which is which is fun, which is fine. All sorts of creativity are valid. I'd be curious to hear from all of you artists in the in the comment section down below, uh, what kind of artist are you? Are you more freeform? How does your how do you get your creativity flowing? I think it's so interesting to hear about different creative processes because it is so different for so many people. And I think that's one of the most human things is creativity. I mean, it's not really something that you see in other species on the planet. Creativity is pretty uniquely human. So I just think it's fascinating getting all philosophical at this late night recording of this apartment build. I think Mason would approve. He does have this awesome quote in the game where he says that the world needs more people with questions and fewer people who are sure that they have the answers. That's one of my favorite quotes in the entire Nancy Drew series because he is so right. Um, that is such a good point. And I think he would approve of my late night philosophical ramblings. <laughs> I also hope that he would approve of this nice little bedroom that I have crafted for him. Going again with a little bit more blue, the very nice folded shirts. I did think it was a little risque for Mason to have shirts that aren't perfectly tucked away in his dresser, but I also imagined that maybe those are like his I use these shirts all the time kind of pile where he needs quick access to them and they're still very neatly folded and they still definitely have a place. I, I can't imagine that he would have it any other way. I also really enjoyed making these walk-in closets. I still haven't like gotten over the fact that we have this option with the Dream Home Decorator game pack. The ability to make walk-in closets with hanging clothes just makes the game feel so much more real. I really, really appreciate that. Anything that makes the games feel more real is right up my alley because like I said, I'm kind of like a recreator. I like to recreate real life in a like new fun way that I like to imagine things would be. And so if you give me things that help make that possible in The Sims, like even the vacuum cleaners with the bust the dust kit, not gonna lie, I really like them. <laughs> I really kind of secretly like the bust the dust kit and um, I'm not gonna be ashamed about it. <laughs> not that anyone is telling me that I should, but I just, I do feel a little silly. Um, enjoying that pack because it literally just comes with like vacuums and dust bunnies but I really like when my sims houses get dirty if I have to clean so do they <laughs> you can't escape it just because you live in a virtual world come on sims anyway we are going to be finishing decorating up mason's um very neat office here everything in its perfect little place even if things look a little askew Mason knows exactly where they belong. This this is his jam. So we're finishing decorating up the office and then we will be moving on to the screenshots here very shortly. I hope you enjoyed this build and if you have any suggestions for future character homes that I should build or other locations you'd like to see, please let me know in the comment section down below. And please feel free to check out my second channel, Perfectionist Anonymous, which will also be linked in the description box down below. That is my new project and I'm very passionate about it. So I would love if you would check that out as well. As always, thank you so much for watching fellow detectives. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon.